with a market integration report and updates. Oh, be quiet here. Good morning. Thank you for uh, having me today. I know it has probably been a little while since I've been out here to give you an update on Thornapple Manor and the things that we're doing and how things are going. So I thought it'd be a good time to come back and, and share a few things with you. And we got a new report this year from Plant Moran who does our cost report. So that was kind of the impetus. But before I get to that, um, I want to share just a couple of stories uh, real quick. Um, the first is um, our life enrichment director, Sally, I was walking down the hall uh, one day and I saw her sitting in one of the residents' rooms uh, with a guitar and uh, she was sitting on the residents' bedside who was on hospice and was actively passing. Uh, I just softly playing the guitar and singing to her some songs that uh, were clearly familiar to her. And um, the smile on her face, um, the resident's face, uh, told me that in those, those last days or hours that uh, we were able to bring a little peace and comfort um, to her. And uh, that's a great comfort. And I see that kind of stuff daily uh, as I walk down the halls. This past weekend, uh, another thing that came up was one of our maintenance directors or staff members that uh, facility services uh, employee that works uh, at the manor and lives in the area uh, knew when the storms rolled through that power had flickered um, at, at his house and probably likely had flickered at Thornapple Manor. Though we have a generator, if we lose power, we still keep things going and keep things running. But that little bit of flicker, just like that thing that does to your clock at home and makes it start flashing, also kills our chillers. And this past weekend was a little warm. And knowing that uh, it's easier to keep things cool than it is to try to cool them down in the heat of the day, had, uh, had they not checked on it, um, and things warmed up in the building, it would be much tougher to bring it cooler. He made a point of getting in, talking with our facility services director, and getting the, the systems restarted, because it's not a simple process. It's not like turning a light switch on. Getting those big chillers up and running is a process, and it takes a little bit. Um, and so they were able to do that early in the morning and keep the building cool. And he knew that the comfort of our residents uh, on that hot weekend day was paramount. And so he wanted to make sure that that was taken care of. And those two little stories are indicative of what our staff do uh, every day. Um, and I think that they highlight um, the, the dedication and the caring that our team uh, brings every day to work. And I'm proud to be here today to represent them and, uh, and thank them for their, their service and their dedication to our, our residents and, and their service to Berry County. So, um, and I think that that kind of leads into uh, this report and some of the great things that we're doing. So this market integration report, um, there are only 35 medical care facilities in the state of Michigan. There are 83 counties and only 35 medical care facilities. So I think we're very blessed to have uh, one of those uh, here in Berry County, and we thank you for um, allowing us to have that here. Um, uh, and on this market integration report, on the page uh, two, just some general statistics, um, and the top five referring hospitals, uh, we really have three that we get the most referrals from, Ascension Borges in, Battle, um, in Kalamazoo, Spectrum Health Butterworth in Grand Rapids, and then Spectrum Health Pennock. But if you turn to page uh, four, in the middle, you'll see that we get 73% of the referrals uh, from and discharges from Spectrum Health Pennock. So uh, of all the discharges that Pennock Hospital sends out to skilled nursing facilities, 73% of them come to us at Thornapple Manor. Looking at um, Spectrum Health Butterworth, uh, we get about 51 discharges. Uh, this is, uh, by the way, for 2017. It's, the, the, it's a little stale in terms of the data, but it kind of gives you a picture of what's going on. Um, and uh, so in, in 2017, we get 51 admissions from Spectrum Health Butterworth, and we were their number 11 uh, on the list in terms of uh, the referring facilities. And then Borges, uh, Ascension Borges, we had 12, uh, and we were 28th on their list. But what was really surprising to me in this report as I went through this, if you'll turn to the next page, uh, page 5, what this does is care, it compares the total cost of episodic care uh, per discharge. So looking at Spectrum Health Pennock, um, we take 73% of their referrals. Our average cost of caring for a resident in our building over their episode of care while they're with us is $6,861 um, versus uh, their other uh, top referring uh, facility, which was $10,000, uh, almost $500. Um, and looking at Spectrum Health Butterworth, we're the um, third uh, most cost-effective 
6891. And when you look at Ascension Borges, even though we're number 28 on their list, we are half the cost of uh, uh, their highest uh, performing uh, discharge, Ascension Borges place at 12,000, we're at 6,200. So we might have a higher cost per day to provide services, um, but we do a better job of getting our residents the care that they need and getting them um, recovered and then getting back into the community, uh, thus our lower total cost of care. And um, that's a great service, I think, that we provide not only to, um, uh, to our residents and get them home faster and sooner, uh, get them the care that they need, but it's a great service to the taxpayers and reducing the costs. Uh, in addition, our um, expected Rehospitalization rate from the facility uh, was 30.16 uh, in the last report that I received, which was for the last uh, uh, quarter back and then a, a year following. Uh, we were 23.4, so 6.7 percent below. Um, so we're not even sending folks back to the hospital um, uh, as they might expect us to. Uh, we're keeping them either in our building or getting them home, which is a good thing uh, for everybody. And then the last thing I wanted to share, which kind of leads all this into, and it's, it's up and coming, it's kind of um, not out there yet, and I got special permission to share it with you, so I feel very privileged. Uh, but Spectrum Health um, decided to uh, create a high-performing network of skilled nursing facilities that they would send all their discharges to. Or that they would, um, they of course, want to honor uh, residents' choice always. So if a resident wants to go to a specific building, they're going to certainly uh, make sure that that happens. But if a resident uh, patient doesn't know where they want to go, they're going to say, here's a list of our high-performing networks, folks that do a great job. And uh, they went 50 miles from Grand Rapids and grabbed all the uh, skilled nursing facilities in that 50-mile radius and picked only those that scored at 75% or higher um, in their matrix. Um, they did not use the CMS 5-star. They used a component of that, components of that. Um, but they are also, uh, they're looking at the discharge rates and rehospitalization rates and ER visit rates and uh, some quality indicators uh, on length of stay uh, that they get from a company called Navi Health um, that we work with on a regular basis. Um, and we scored high enough to be invited to participate in that high performing network. And so um, last week I signed the affiliation agreement and sent that to them. Um, this network won't be officially created until September 1st, and it won't be officially marketed until that time. And so I asked them when I sent it in, I said, it's okay if I share this with the county commission because I'm going to be meeting with them. And they said, yes, just don't do a whole lot of marketing and advertising yet. And I said, I, I won't do that, but I wanted to share that with you as well. So uh, that's just some of the great work, I think, that, uh, that we're doing out there and trying to make sure that our residents are well cared for and um, getting back home and getting on their feet again. And that's all I have. But Any questions for Don? Do yes. you have much problem having to turn people away because you're full? You know, it, it, that occurs from time to time. And uh, it's funny that you asked that because as of today, uh, we are 100% full. Um, every bed in our building is spoken for. We've got a couple of beds that are empty, but we've got folks that are, are pending admissions. Um, last Friday, we had three discharges and we had three admissions. Um, and it was kind of like a little hotel. We don't normally see that, but we're discharging folks and you get the room turned over and you get an admission later that day under those rooms. So um, it does occur on occasion. Uh, we're in one of those periods right now where the referrals are high uh, and our building is completely full. So yes, that happens, unfortunately. Any other questions for Don? Don, thank you for your commitment and thank you for all of, uh, that your um, organization does. It's uh, um, I don't share a lot of personal things uh, from this seat, but um, my, both my grandparents, um, uh, my grandmother who just passed uh, a couple months ago, um, called the Thornapple Manor home at the end. And so um, it's uh, really satisfying to see um, it on both sides. So thank you for all that you and your staff do. Thank you, and we're glad we could be there for them. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. All right. Next presentation this morning is Jim Brown, Hastings Charter Township Supervisor. Good morning. Thank you for your time. Thank you. It's all information, no money, so I'll be excited. <laughs> Try again, come back later. <laughs> um, 
I'm going to read the cover letter that, that's on this. Uh, the world's recycling situation has drastically changed due to China stopping the purchase of our recycling materials due to contamination. Several other large countries are in the same process. The Barry County Solid Waste Oversight Committee needs to form a long-range plan to take these and other, other uh, local conditions into <clears throat> consideration. There are no easy answers, but there are things we can do. The Solid Waste Committee needs to have some idea where the county commissioners stand in the overall picture of supporting a recycling effort both physically and financially. The enclosed questionnaire is similar to the green sheet survey sent to townships several years ago. Those results were overwhelmingly 70% 70 70 positive in support of recycling in a basic form and reasonable cost. Completing the questionnaire will greatly help in giving thought and direction in this planning effort. Please return this questionnaire in the self-addressed stamped envelope as soon as possible so the committee will have this information before the next Solid Waste Oversight Committee meeting on August 9th. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, four questions. Would a coordinated countywide recycling effort be more effective than several individual systems doing similar but different efforts? Yes or no? If coordinated, should all townships, villages, and city be included in the plan? Yes or no? There is always a, always a financial cost to recycling. Should this cost be fairly shared by each governmental entity, county, townships, villages, and city? Yes or no? And number four, no matter the plan, what should be the leading force to make it successful? Number one, the county commissioners. Yes or no? An appointed committee under the Solid Waste Oversight Committee direction? Yes or no? And if appointed committee, should a paid director be used for day-to-day -day operations? Yes or no? Pretty simple. We need your input. Um, the recycling world changed dramatically overnight, uh, almost a year and a half ago when China shut off the importation of all the recycled, quote, material that we were shipping them. Uh, I made some comments at the uh, Michigan Recycling Coalition uh, under public comment, and I said this was the best thing that ever could happen to us. Dead silence. When I sat down after I explained why, I sat down and I got a round of applause, which shocked me to no end. And the reason I said that was that we are too smart, we've got too much talent to be shipping our garbage overseas, and we don't need to ship garbage. We can actually take the material ourselves and, 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 and use it. When I walked out of the, the room, though, one of the big waste haulers, who I will not name, called me over and said, that was a stupid thing to say. Well, those people are in the collection business. They're very good at it, and we need them. But we don't need them to do what they're doing right now, which is basically mixing everything into one big pile and then hoping we can make some sense out of it. This whole thing is, is starting to shift from a single stream recycling situation. It's not going to end, but it, it's shifting to a source separated. And a good example is what uh, we have at our township. Uh, I can give you exactly how many pounds, how many cubic feet of material that we've collected of mixed paper, cardboard, plastics, and metal, um, metal cans, basically, for the last two, two and a half years. Nobody in Barry County can do that because they're throwing everything in one big bin. They're paying God knows how much to have it hauled away, and that's the last that you see of it. The technology is also changing dramatically. Uh, take pizza boxes, for example. Uh, the old <coughs> thought was, oh, you, you, you can't recycle those because they've got grease on, on the bottom. That's old, old, uh, that's old news. Um, West Rock, which is the largest corrugated manufacturer in the United States uh, in Pride Industries, but West Rock, they will take every, every pizza box that you can possibly ship them. Their technology for recycling that 
is top notch. Um, the pizza box recycling uh, or project that we got with our school, uh, you're going to hear more about that later. Kids are collecting pizza boxes. And the challenge is to collect enough pizza boxes to equal the height of the Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty is, Liberty is 305 feet high. They have collected 1,000, almost 1,600 boxes. So they're almost to the top of the Statue of Liberty. When those boxes are all collected, they're going to go to the recycling people, and we'll just do a full circle on this. Point being, though, is that in Barry County, six townships are doing something similar, but we could do a lot better. We need we need something for the whole county, but we can't do it alone. So I want you to seriously take a look at that uh, questionnaire. There's a page in there for comments. Be completely honest because we need something to go forward with. The uh, Solid Waste Committee, the contract with Iris Waste Diversions is, 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 is long gone now, uh, as of the 1st of June. So if we're going to do anything, we've got to start planning and, and get with it. Uh, time is important, not to mention money. Any questions? Madam Chair, um, as somebody that sits on uh, the Solid Waste Board, uh, Jim has been a, a passionate leader on this. And um, I think the, the commission and the public needs to understand kind of the challenge we're dealing with with the, the Solid Waste Oversight Committee. Um, we have a statutory responsibility. There are certain things that we have to do as a committee, but um, it's not a bad thing. Uh, recycling has kind of um, come into our wheelhouse. And so it's, it's kind of similar to like the Parks uh, Commission being in charge of recycling. Yeah, it's kind of related if, I mean, you both go outside and you both deal with space but it's not our it's not our legal responsibility so um, I think uh, this Commission needs to look at what uh, Jim's asking and uh, give the the committee some guidance on what type of a plan would be supported and two, um, look at some of our successes um, and model our recycling plan after stuff that's working here specifically the parks board i think if we're really serious about um recycling that we should separate out the recycling responsibilities from the solid waste oversight committee and give it to a board um with some funding behind it so they can make uh, targeted investments um but uh right now i i think um i would echo jim on uh uh, we need to know where the, the commission is um, in terms of recycling. It's been a few years since we've had this discussion. That's all I have. Mr. Smoker. Jim, I know that you have one of the better recycling systems out there right next to your town, Chef Hall, and probably have some of the cleanest. Is there a market for it when it's sorted like you sort it? Or do you still have to pay to get rid of that number one there is a market but here's here's the reality it's like farming um be careful <laughs> no, uh, well, She's taking I'm, notes. actually i'm going to use her as, as a good example you're talking about uh, uh farm products let's take milk uh wheat corn oats does that stay at a, at a nice level that you make money every every time you plant it whatever not hardly it goes up and down, up and down, up and down. Uh, recycling is almost, well, it's, it's in the same deal. Two years ago, cor oh, no, corrugated was going for around $200 a ton. Today, it's going for 20 Mixed paper is a negative $2 a ton. You were going to pay to get rid of it. You got two choices. You can take it to the landfill, which is probably the easiest, maybe not the cheapest, but it's the easiest, or it can be waste to energy. Plastics are, are, are the, 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 the uh, same situation. Metal, metal stays pretty decent, although metal is, is, is way down. 
So when somebody says, well, gee, you're, you're making a fortune when you, when you collect this and sell it, no, you're not making a fortune. If you, if you break even, you're going to be lucky. What you do, though, when you do collect this and you do recycle it, you keep a lot of people working. You keep that, that material out of the, out of the environment. Uh, Sarah Nelson can tell you probably how many plastic bags that they find in, in Thornapple Lake, uh, or the ocean for that matter. So, uh, yes, yes, you can. And, and, and the secret is, is to keep it basically source separated. And uh, which is more work, I will admit. But once you get the system up and running, it is, it, it, it's not more work. In fact, is people love it. Uh, the front page of the banner, uh, or the reminder last week, uh, was uh, actually, it was our recycling uh, module. The, the material going in, the, in there is very, very clean. Knock on wood. Um, <laughs> it's the only way that we're gonna, that we're going to make this work. Uh, there is a room for garbage. We've all got it, and that's going to go to the landfill. That, that, that's just the, that's that's it. Um, and the people that operate landfills, their costs are going straight up. Um, for a good example, the the uh, recycle the MRF, the uh, material uh, receiving facility in Grand Rapids, um, they have a waste to energy. They sell what, what they can't use or sell or move. They actually burn it and turn it into electricity. Uh, consumers Energy buys it, and uh, last year consumers or last year when their contract ran out with consumers, the new contract. Uh, was 20% less per kilowatt hour than the previous contract, which cost them $500,000. So you can see what their expenses are going to be. Uh, th there are no easy answers, believe me, but there are some answers that we can do. We can do it locally. And once that material is collected, yes, there is a market for it. Uh, glass is another example. Nobody wants glass. It, it's terrible, except except for the people that are, that are collecting waste because it, they're collecting it by the pound. Glass weighs a lot, so they get paid a lot for it. On the other hand, you have to get rid of it. And now what? Now you, it, it's, it's, it, it's tough. Uh, there's an endless market for glass. It's just that we haven't, uh, we have got serious about collecting it. Uh, there's markets for everything on this. Specifically though, you need Realistically, about 40,000 pounds of whatever you're going to sell, you need it bailed. And if you've got it in that condition, the markets in the United States are endless. That is not the problem. We just haven't collected it. We haven't kept it clean. And we just need to get it in one place. Uh, so anyway, that's, the, uh, that's, that's basically the situation. Uh, we're talking with Sunfield, or Sunfield, with Eaton County, because in Eaton County, Sunfield uh, recycling uh, operation over there, uh, we would like to partner up with them somehow because they've got the, the facility that, that, that could take it. They don't have all the equipment that we need, but that's, that, that's, that's an easy issue. Um, there are answers. We, we can do it. We really can. But we've got to do it together. And as far personally, do I want the county commissioners to have to do all this? No. What I, I, I what we need to do is have you support the Solid Waste Oversight Committee to get the job done, and then the Solid Waste Committee is going to have to have a subcommittee, like like Ben said, that's going to be underneath that uh, to get the job done. So we just we just need the the uh, support. Uh, not a lot of it, but but we do need it. Any other questions? And just a statement. I do realize that the price of stuff fluctuates, and and I just wanted confirmation. I guess that if we do this, just like you've done it, I don't want to see it done, and then all of a sudden it ends up in a landfill. And I just wondered if there was a market for it after if it's clean. And yes, there is. There is a market for it. It, but you have to have it in a, in a form that you can get it to that market, mm -hmm. simplistically, yep. Thank you.
Yeah, there, if I may, Madam Chair, there's a, there's a consensus on the committee that we want to do recycling the right way. And if we're going to say we're recycling, we're going to put our best effort into making sure that those materials don't go in the land. So we don't want to do it just to make ourselves feel better. Yeah. We want to do it because it's the right thing to do. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Brown. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Already? Uh, That's too soon. You haven't thought about it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All righty. Public hearings, we have none. Items for consideration. Madam Chair, I move for the approval of claims in the amount of $121,446.52. Support. Motion by Smelker, support by Gibson for the approval of claims in the amount of $121,446.52. Um, is there any discussion? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. Gibson? Yes. Jackson? Yes. Parker? Yes. Smelker? Yes. Connor? Yes. Geiger? Yes. Wait. Yes. <coughs> The item is approved. Sorry about that. <laughs> Madam Chair, I move for the approval of the 2019-2020 Child Care Fund Plan and Budget. Support. Moved by Smelker, support by Geiger for the approval of the 2019-2020 Child Care Fund Plan and Budget. Um, discussion. Inez is here to help to um, give us some information on this if you'd like to hear from her. All right. And what you, I'd love to hear from you, Inez, if this is something new. It's pretty similar to last year's budget. There really haven't been any changes. The only change I would make everyone aware of is the um, state pays first, which was a change that occurred at the state level. So what that means is the state of Michigan will be paying for uh, children who are in neglect in foster care under a neglect and abuse first and then the county will have to reimburse them for whatever expenses were incurred so foster care daily rates that is the only change so you probably see a reduction in our budget from last year and that's as a result of the only amount that we put in the budget was the amount that the county is going to be responsible for um, only other changes that really took place in the budget we eliminated some contractual services that we weren't really using that were in there last year that we just never it never came to fruition so we just left those out this year we're really focusing on training our staff and giving them the skills and the um, credentials to be able to provide a lot of services in-house versus contracting with other agencies that's pretty much it I believe yeah any questions You've gotten good at this presentation, Inez. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so the question before the committee is the approval of the 2019-2020 Child Care Fund Plan and Budget. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Wait, the clerk needs to call the roll. Sorry, it's money. Jackson. Yes. Parker. Yes. Smoker. Yes. Connor. Yes. Geiger. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Wayne. Yes. The item is approved. Unfinished business, we have nothing before us. New business, there's nothing. County Administrator's report, um, Michael is not here. Luella, do you have anything in his stead? Thank you. County Chairperson's <coughs> report. Um, thank God for the respite in the weather. Um, last week was miserable for almost everybody in our community. Um, and um, for those who are currently without power, I um, hope that your relief comes soon. We were without power for just the better part of um, 15 or 16 hours. Um, and of course there was nothing on our farm that was wrong, it was down the road. So we've lost a lot of um, mature antique trees that um, we will miss, but um, it's safer now that we don't have some of those big limbs hanging over roads anymore. <clears throat> Um, my meeting schedule has been done for a couple of weeks. Community action won't meet today. 
or won't meet this week because it, of July. It's hard to get attendance. Everybody's on vacation. But we will start a full swing um, the first week in August. Um, so I don't think I have anything other than fair was busy, um, fun, and not relaxing at all. So now that I'm home, it's back to business, and actually riding my lawnmower is um, quite relaxing. It's, it's my happy place because there's not a lot of paperwork to do with it. So Vice Chairperson's report. Thank you for being here, ma'am. You're welcome. Um, I really don't have anything to report because I've just been recuperating. So um, I would like to just remind everybody that next Tuesday <coughs> It's the fifth Tuesday of a month, so we won't be meeting next Tuesday. We'll be back in August. Forgot about that. Cool. Um, Commissioner Parker. Yeah, so I want to uh, invite everybody to No Family Left Indoors tonight at the McEwen Bridge Park uh, from 6.30 to 8. Uh, there's uh, the found out that uh, Smokey the Bear is probably going to be there tonight. So if you want to get your picture with Smokey the Bear, this is a good time to come. So um, uh, went to the Yankee Springs Township meeting uh, a couple <coughs> weeks ago, and uh, uh, they got some things done, uh, some things they didn't get done. So they uh, have got to work out their differences there. and. Uh, I think that uh, cooler heads will certainly prevail if, if they keep going with that. So um, I think that's just about it. I uh, went to the LDFA meeting in Middleville, and uh, uh, we're going to be using some LDFA meeting money to uh, help uh, Put curbs and sidewalks in uh, uh, from the east on the East State Road going out of the village. So, <clears throat> but still in the village. So, I don't know if anybody has any questions for me on anything that way. So, okay. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Geiger. I'm all set. Commissioner Smoker. Uh, attended the uh, Central Dispatch meeting. Everything running smoothly there. Um, we are getting our new trainees up and running and hopefully to be full staffed and not too distant future. And this weekend, the 27th, is the Freeport Homecoming with a car show, live band, museums open. So if you have any spare time, come on over. Thank you. Commissioner Jackson. Good morning. Um, attended the Barry Township meeting on the 9th. Uh, they had a presentation and a good discussion about a $1.4 million potential water tower and some USDA funding to go along with that. Um, something that they've been talking about for probably 10 years that they need to take action on. Um, really, if they're going to have some growth in Southern Barry County, that's going to be one of the catalysts to make that happen. So um, also continuing to keep tabs on and work with um, the potential for a DDA down there in Barry Township. And of course, flooding continues to be one of the main concerns as we go down there because the water levels are still high. Um, the nice stretch of weather, which wasn't so kind to the fairgoers, has been great for the lakes, though, with some evaporation just to get rid of a little bit of that excess water. Um, had the economic development and Brownfield grant. One of the conversations was on the $300,000 assessment grant awarded to Barry County. Um, so 200,000 for contaminated sites, 100,000 for petroleum. So we had um, a consultant then to talk about how, the, how that grant would be applied and some of the things we can do that's already earmarked for a few things, but that's in the beginning of the process. I don't think the, I don't think the, the date is like October 1st when they can start submitting requests, but that'll be helpful to have that money to look at some sites of potential contamination and figure out what's going on in the county there. Um, attended Rutland Township, JPA. Those were both fairly short meetings. Um, the usual suspects, um, our Animal Shelter Advisory Board had that this month on the 16th. Really proud of those guys. Um, as some of you have known the history of the Animal Shelter, that always has not been a pleasant board to work with, but they've got a really good group 
of people on that board, a good group of volunteers. Ken Kirsch has done a good job of um, creating a director level um, community there. They're bringing on new volunteers and you'll see if you have time to attend Saturday's event, there'll be somewhere between about 30 to 40 volunteers who actively put time in at the shelter that are going to be there running this whole event to raise money, um, working with uh, the Humane Society as well in there, but um, the, um, the Shelter Advisory Board and those volunteers have worked their tails off to put this event together to try to raise um, upwards of $20,000 for a new van. So it's refreshing to see people taking that approach, willing to go out and work their butts off to make something happen. It's something that they need. Um, I know that they have been given several, I think uh, Ken had requested several projects this year that were approved through Michael for their budget, but um, they wanted to take this on themselves and it gave them an opportunity to really do some good things together. So you can support them Saturday. Love to see you there. And uh, that is all I have. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Gibson. The renovation at the transit, the renovation additions going along well. They're still on schedule for the October completion. Oh, that's it? That's it. I, I would like to thank um, Commissioners Gibson and Parker for, or Gibson and Smelker for um, their courtesy vehicle driving over the last week or so down at the fairgrounds. It was kind of fun to see them be public servants. <laughs> in a real sense. He ended up in the hospital. Uh-oh. <laughs> he forgot to drink water. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So, um, limited public comment. At this time, any member of the public wishing to address the board may do so for up to three minutes. <laughs> Did you forget something? I asked this. The Titan Billing. What are we going to get a uh, building sign indicator or whatever on that building over there? Signage over there? There was some. Oh. Um, there's possible philanthropic um, dollars. I, I, I think there's some discussions with the Titan family about that. I don't know. But I did look into that at the end of the year of last year. We're waiting for oh, somebody. Oh, shoot. This is public comment. I didn't even have to respond. <laughs> no, I think there's something <laughs> in the works for that. Yeah, I think there's something in the works. We need it on there. It, I, can so give him, I can give you some information after the meeting. It's, it's too good of a building to sit there and not know what it is. Uh, number two, uh, there was a supervisor's meeting tonight, and um, I know recycling is going to be brought up. So um, think about what I gave you today. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Any other public comment? Um, any other business to come before <clears throat> this board? I, I would like to encourage you all when you see Mr. Haney walking around today to wish him happy birthday. Hey, we happy sing? birthday, Don. Yeah. Can we sing happy birthday? We could sing. Mm -hmm. If you're going to lead, Dan, go ahead. <laughs> There being no further business and without objection, the board will now